Drew here to welcome you to another episode of the Andrew Glosheski Experience. It's going to be episode 335. And today, we are going to continue the Bayonetta study. I purchased this art book years ago. It's in Japanese, so I've never been able to read it. And uh, has a bunch of beautiful concept art. It's for Bayonetta 1, so this is before the whole Bayonetta universe existed and uh, yeah man they had to put in a lot of thought in order in order to create you know not just the world but the even just the character herself they hired a uh, fashion design illustrator to do all the designs and yeah man all, all her designs are beautiful right so I knew that one day I was gonna go in and study these things and do more than just look at them like I have over the years, but actually go in and start drawing them and, and you know, things like that. I never knew I was going to take it to the capacity that I have, because uh, this is like part 67 or something like that. Like, I have 67 episodes of me uh, drawing Bayo here and all of her iterations and things like that. And, uh, yeah, so far... This is the, the design we're working on today. I started it in the last stream. And, yeah, let's, uh, let's go, man. Let's just get to it. And I think in the last stream, all I did was the sketch, like the line art. You know what I mean? Just broke it down by pencil. Or in ink. I've been uh, just working pretty much exclusively in ink ever since October, ever since Inktober. Uh, I saw the benefit of it, you know, the ink just shows up better on camera. Oh yeah, let me get my other light in here. Should brighten this up a little bit. Sorry for the uh, poor camera quality. We will fix that one day. And yeah, we're just going to jump into coloring. Uh, she has like this white snake skin uh, kind of jumper suit with the with the bison pants and and yeah man let's uh let's just jump into it uh where where are my markers uh, there you are all right so i got some cool gray fat markers here And we're going to use this to kind of get the kind of get the shading in for now. And yeah, since it's uh, a really light gray, it's probably not showing up too much, but that's fine. I'm just going to go through it real quick. And, uh, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll start rendering it out a little bit darker, you know, later. Yeah, I wonder if this is even popping up on camera. I had someone recently um, tell me, like, oh, it's a little bit mappy, can't see shit. Like, I get it. My bad. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't know streaming was going to be as difficult as this, you know? But it's a part of it. Man, this marker is... This is an old marker, now that I think about it, so... I'm, 
I may actually need to go out and purchase a, a, a gray marker pack now that I think about it. I mean, I went out and I bought the Ohuhu skin tone pack. So, yeah, it would make sense to get a gray marker pack. Because um, the only gray markers that I have are these uh, Faber Castells. And they have four shades of cool gray, four shades of warm gray. And that's it. All right, so that's it with the uh, lightest gray. Let's uh, go. Just a little bit darker. I hope this isn't too dark. Let's uh, test. Yeah, it's pretty dark, huh? Yeah, so we're just blocking in like major, major uh, shade points. And yeah, this actually is very close to the the gray marker that I've been using for this bale study this whole time, the uh, brush tip. That's like super good. I love that marker. go got that got that and <clears throat> all right so that one was a little dark so I can really go ham with it but let me grab my oh man Markers just went flying everywhere. Oh well, they're not the ones I need. So let those ride. So yeah, I have this gray one that I've been using. And yeah, let's compare. It's slightly darker, but just barely.
There we go. So yeah, once we get the uh, shading in, I'll probably start texturing. I did want to add a bit of color. Um, I have been using a specific color for these like kind of shading in white. Normally I go yellow with it, but yellow just doesn't seem the way to go with these Bayo designs. So I kind of went with this lime green marker. And I've been using it to kind of represent like the grays almost. And for good reason, you can barely see, like, I know you can see the darker grays that I just applied, but the lighter one that you, you know, you can't see it. Uh, so yeah, it might, might be I to, uh, kind of throw this really green color in. And I think it'll work in the long run because she has these uh, gold. She has these uh, kind of like gold flakes in her design. And I think the, uh, you know, uh, I, I like to throw green into the gold to make it look a little bit more golden. So it's not just like, like you know, yellow and orange, like most people may think. So it doesn't look like, uh, doesn't just look like, you know, cheese or something. So yeah, I'm not throwing in as much green as I did like the, uh, that really light gray. And this design being reptilian probably doesn't hurt, you know, to have a little bit of a, some green going on, you know? All right. All right. And... I wonder what are, what are these color grays? I know they're both cool gray. Cool gray one and three. Those are the fat brushes. I got uh, the regular the regular brushes. And let me see what cool grays they have there. Cause if those are one and three, and if I can get a, a cool gray two. Maybe I could throw that in there. So these are one, four, three, and six. Okay, so yeah, there is no two. So I don't have a color in between, really? Damn. Yeah, see, this one doesn't really hit, you know? Okay. Well, it is what it is, man. 
This is one of the reasons why I like uh, watercolor painting. And yeah, I think that's something that I'll probably be getting into soon enough is uh, doing some watercolor sketches, but I don't want to do that with these studies. That'll probably be more with uh, uh, Okay, so let's just uh, let's just do it, man. This is gonna take a while, and I don't really have that much time. So oh yeah, this is gonna take four. Ever. So yeah, what I'm, all I'm doing is kind of creating almost hexagonal, because the aim is to make a hexagonal shape, but really, it's looking a little more like a diamond pattern, which is fine because it fits, the, the diamond pattern fits in to one another, similar to a hexagonal shape. Oh yeah, that'll be a lot faster, honestly, if I do it this way. And yeah, it'll, in the end, give off the, uh, the snake skin. Oh yeah, this is looking super dope. This is exactly what I wanted. So, I wish there was, this is why I need to up this stream and get better cameras and and all this other stuff. I would love to have like a zoom in um, ability. Uh, right now what I would have to do is like adjust, is adjust the, uh, literally the armature to zoom in but then my brush always gets in the way I just recently uh, adjusted the armature so that way it doesn't get in the way and notice the past few streams haven't I haven't been bumping the armature at all and you know hey man that's part of the promise of uh, always doing it bigger and better you know maybe it's not much but hey man this is what I got But yeah, once I once I can get to a one, once I can get to a place, oh fuck yeah, this is starting to look like snakeskin pattern, and that's the thing, it, it's tiny, you know what I mean? You know the scales are tiny, so to like kind of hit this whole body with it, it's gonna be a minute. I wonder if I'll even like get most of it done. I wonder if I'll just kind of get the suit done and then I'll have to do like a third stream since these are like kind of short. But yeah, this shit looks dope.
And then, yeah, this is the uh, the light gray that uh, brush that I'll be using. But um, uh, then I have the uh, kind of dark gray that's pr basically black, and I'll be going over the uh, more shaded areas with that. Uh, I may want to do the gold before I do that black. So I wonder if this stream is predominantly going to be me throwing in this this great texture. You know, I wasn't sure uh, how long it would take for me to do something like this. And, uh, well, now I do. <laughs> and like I said, it'll be surprising if I can get even... Uh, Even, even this much done, you know? <clears throat> and yeah, I think this is going to be dope, especially when I take pictures and put them like really small. Uh, or not really small but like actual take pictures of the zoomed in you could actually see the see the texture uh you know g mr drew on instagram you know follow me uh that way you know even if the stream quality isn't all that good like you're here you're you're watching you're joining me you're seeing me like uh throwing in this uh this texture and you're like damn man he's really really doing the shit. And, uh, you know, maybe you, you don't really see it all too well here, but, you know, you follow me on, on Instagram, I, I kind of post, you know, like you, you'll see all you see all these squares. They're basically the Instagram squares, you know. And I think, uh, you know, watching these videos, seeing me do this and not, you know, whether you could really see it or not. Um, You know, you 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 join the uh, join me on Instagram, and uh, yeah, you'll you'll start to see them a little bit more. This is definitely looking super dope. I'm loving this. Like, I love any time I get to apply a texture. I remember on some of the earlier Bayo stuff, like, when they were really playing with, with patterns on, um, with her design, like, trying to figure something out, playing with the light and the dark aspects of her character. And, uh... Yeah. 
Yeah, I remember the the texturing became some of my favorite stuff, man. It started looking kind of almost like a sim symbiotish, like a Venom and stuff, Carnage, because of the red and black color scheme that she has. So, yeah, definitely uh, super dope. You can kind of make out the dots. I'm, I'm happy. Happy you guys are at least, at the very least, getting like a little bit of all this. And really all this is is just me, yes, it's applying texture and all that other stuff, like this snake skin pattern, aiming for the hexagon, but kind of making it more diamond-like. It's like whatever. Um, but applying it to the shaded areas that I just kind of like loosely threw the grays in earlier in the stream, you know, just the uh, super light grays and dark grays and then uh, the green, the yellow green highlighter ish color. It's like taking those and just following those and having those be my guide to the, uh, to the pattern here. super dope who knew that just drawing dots can be like something therapeutic but also like so dope just create this bomb ass texture now keep in mind the uh the original artist was working digitally and you know it's a lot simpler to just make a pattern or a seamless texture seamless pattern out of a jpeg you know what i mean like you take uh you know snake skin you alter the coloring um And, you know, you could turn that into a repeating pattern, and then you just apply that pattern to, uh, you know, as a fill. And then, boom, like, you know, with a few clicks of the button, you have a, a repeating pattern that you could use on, on, you know, whenever you want. It's in the system now. It's saved within the Photoshop files. Uh... You know, having to do this manually is a lot more laborious and time consuming and would be a more expensive process. So, uh, just don't want anyone thinking like this is. That this would have been the way that they actually did the work. Like, it, it'd be too, too costly. You gotta think, hiring an. Uh, fashion design artist in the first place probably cost them a pretty penny as it is you know ah oh, this is so dope alright let's get this uh get this other leg right <clears throat>
I should probably get her shoes now too. Her shoes are kind of just this dark gray color. Let me uh. Go. And then, yeah, I'll just uh, go over that with the black marker or the uh, dark gray. Later. Oh, yeah. And that's the other thing about these animal patterns is like you don't have to be super consistent with it because it's an animal pattern, it's life, it's nature. It's the whole wabasabi of everything of like like it's a bit imperfect. And by making it imperfect, you make it perfect. So it's like, yeah, these snake scales, you know, who knows what part of the snake is being sewn into what part of the, uh,
you know, in, into the part of the suit right then and there. You know, it's a whole art form in itself. You got to think like alligator shoes and alligator belts and all that stuff. Like, like an artisan, an artist has to kind of has to kind of like choose, pick and choose like where in the body they're going to make the cuts in order to make the seams and and you know display the best product you know the thing that when you look at it you're like oh yeah that's definitely you know a rattlesnake belt oh yeah that's definitely I mean this is Bayonetta she probably like skinned an angel <laughs> in order to make this suit. Another thing that I like about this being a hexagonal pattern is it kind of reminds me of a, oh, what's that space video game? Uh, Mass Effect. I always liked Mass Effect because the spacesuits were sexy. Like they just like threw textures and fabrics and armors and you know, it, it made space look kind of almost like it had like a medieval-esque kind of thing to it, you know? I'm telling you, man, I, you know, uh, man, how do, how do I start this, this thought? I mean, essentially what I want to say is like, I'm into a lot of things and I'm happy. Like I love being an artist and being able to explore so much, you know? I talked about in the past how I almost dropped out of being an animation major to study fashion just because I am into clothes. Uh, you know, when I was doing graphic design professionally, uh, I created athletic uniforms, you know, for lacrosse teams and things like that. And, you know, a lot of other sports, football, uh, hockey, all, all that stuff, like creating athletic apparel. And, you know, creating the patterns and the cuts as well as creating the textures and, you know, utilizing team colors and uniforms. And I did all that stuff for, like, colleges and, and you know, clubs and whatever teams, like, wh whatever's out there. Kind of, kind of did it for, for all of them. Did it for five years. And, you know, that was kind of, like, like I'm kind of grateful uh, for that experience just because it was me learning. I, 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 I learned when I got the job under this, uh, this guy who was a fashion major. So me learning patterns from him, it's kind of secondhand, you know, but like I got to, I, I got to learn the, the fashion stuff that I wanted to learn, you know, back in the day when when I almost dropped out. And now I can apply that. I've actually created some of my own patterns. Uh, this is back before my computer crashed in 2013. You know, we're talking a long time ago. But, um, you know, those skills haven't left me, you know what I mean? Like, that's the thing about learning and knowledge. It's... Uh, often like riding a bike type stuff where Oh 
Oh, yeah. So you see where it starts to get, like, super shady, like, in all these uh, kind of wrinkled seams and all that stuff? That's where the uh, the black, the, the, the darker gray is definitely going to come into play and really... Uh, really uh, break that out a little bit more, a little bit better. So that way it doesn't look so muddy. Oh, but what was I talking about? Like learning and education, creating patterns and all that stuff. Like, like I'm into a lot of things and like I'm grateful to have learned all that stuff. And now I, you know, I'm doing a, a bayonet a study, but I'm applying you know, a little bit of the digital art knowledge that I have of like years of making patterns and seamless, seamless patterns and uh, textures and, you know, things that can repeat without, you know, people noticing that it repeats, um, which is an art form in itself to be able to create a repeating pattern and not make it look like it's a repeating pattern, like to make it look seamless so that people don't know that they're looking at a repeating pattern. It's something that... Uh, for instance, I was watching someone play the Dying Light 2 uh, demo the other day, and I was looking at the textures in the uh, buildings in the background, and I noticed like on a door during one of the cutscenes, the door had the same texture just reversed on itself and no additional texturing. So it just looked like a door mirror mirroring itself. And, um, you know, devs got to do stuff like that to cut down on time because they could have textured two doors but really what they opted to do was to texture one door and then just reverse the reverse that door and now you have you know a, a, a double door like but they look they look mirrored and they're just like crossing their fingers that nobody notices those things and breaks them out of the out of the uh, the fantasy that you know you're you're running you're doing uh, <laughs> What's that game about doing uh, all that shit that they do and like deliveries and uh, parkour? There we go. That you know, you're not broken out of the uh, reality that you're doing parkour in a zombie apocalypse because you notice that the door is repeating on itself. It's like, oh, there's a glitch in the matrix. You know what I mean? And so yeah, man, it's it's. You know, it's an art form to be able to make something, uh, make a repeating texture pattern without uh, actually making it look repeated. So that way people aren't, you know, people don't see the art. The best artists are the ones that you never knew were there, you know. Hell yeah. This shit's looking fucking fire. Keep going. Um, so yeah, just going back to like me being into a lot of things, like I look at this study that I'm doing as my giving myself the, the at least the practice of studying fashion like I'm not gonna sit here and say like oh I'm doing fashion design study like I'm not because I'm sure there's a whole lot more to it than uh, than copying and studying another fashion design artists work but I'm also aware that studying another fashion design artists work is a part of learning the fashion design process 
I mean, it only makes sense. If you want to be an oil painter, you're going to study other oil painters. You want to be a watercolor painter, you're going to look at other watercolor painters. You want to be a fashion designer, you're going to look at other fashion designers. So with the knowledge of creating those uniforms and the... Uh, and this Bayonetta study combined, like, you know, I feel like I'm tapping into a part of my mind that I really never, never have when I'm just working on characters and props and environments and things like that. Like, I'm kind of, like, teaching myself something new. And it's exciting. It's fun. I love this. Like, I really love that this pattern is actually kind of looking kind of dope. And if I were to tell someone, yeah, it's a reptilian pattern, like, the, the, the greatest hope would, <clears throat> the greatest outcome would be uh, for people to be like, yeah, I see it. Like, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dope. A white snakeskin jumper? Like, that's dope as fuck. And yeah, granted, this isn't my original concept. You know? That's why I'm always, you know, I, I assert the fact that this is just me doing studies. I, you know, don't want to take anything away from Marie Shimazaki. And, uh... You know, try to claim any of this as my own. Like, this is 100% me being a student and uh, going out of my way to to look at the work of someone who's gone like far beyond me and my in my practice. And I'm only hoping to kind of get a glimpse of the sun. You know. And let's get her collar. So yeah, I, I guess that'd be the thing. Because I know a lot of people, they, they really enjoy me working on um, my original works a lot more so than this study. But unfortunately, this study is, you know, halfway through at best. Like, I'm going to be here for a while working on these things. Um, so I, I would hope to be able to at least impart something onto them to be like, hey, you know, I... I appreciate that you appreciate my work. Um, you know, part of what make what made my work is my curiosity to learn and my want to know kind of a lot and a little bit of everything. Um, and a founding principle that I always like to remind myself of is that animation is the study of life. We recreate life with animation. Uh, that's why you have good animation and bad ones because, you know, something can be a little uncanny when we know what it's supposed to be, but it's not doing that. And uh, it's like, uh, this seems a little bit off. And creating, you, you know, being able to create something a little more lifelike is the greatest thing that an artist can do. Like I said, if it looks lifelike, you're not, you're not taken out of the situation. Whether it be a movie, a game, whatever. You're not taken out of the entertainment factor. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, it's a l little bit of insight, man. I wanted to kind of monologue and, 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 and talk a bit while I worked on this. Uh, again, this is going to be another short video. Um, you know, 
gotta gotta work, gotta go pay them bills, gotta <laughs> gotta promote myself and my Patreon, and hopefully get enough of you to believe in me and want commissions from me, so that way I you know you can get some dope shit from me, and you know I'm I'm more than happy to do it. Uh, with that said, that's the end of this video. I'm G Mr. Drew. It's at G Mr. Drew on all socials. All those links are in my bio here on Twitch, Patreon, uh, YouTube, wherever you're watching this. And, uh, uh, yeah, check out my website, gmrdrew.art. You can contact me through there. Those links are definitely in all, all of my bios as well. You know, it's just gmrdrew everywhere. Just look me up, man. You'll find me. And like I said, I, I be posting these things on Instagram so you get a more uh, high quality, in-depth look into these. Like I'll post like the far away picture and then like close-ups. Like I said, all these squares, you know, you can see how much texturing is going on in each individual square where it's like, oh shit, look how he did the leg. Look how he did the crotchal region. Look how he did the boobs or the collar or, you know, the ankle. Look. You know, I had to switch it up when I did the shoes, like, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, man, definitely, definitely find me on all those places, do all that stuff, do all, do all the liking and the subscribing, all that stuff, man. Hit the button hard, hit it soft, just brush up against it, whatever you want to do, however you live your life, man, do that shit. Anyways, uh, another short one, because daddy's got to work, and... Yeah, I'm not at the point where I could stream, do uh, eight-hour streams all day, every day like I'd love to. Anyways, <laughs> enough rambling. I want to thank you all for watching. Love you all. Peace.